Are we on live? Facebook live? Oh my goodness. All right. So welcome to anyone who is seeing this live. And I guess once it's done, you can see it again just as a video. So I'm here today with uh, my one of my wonderful colleagues, Dr. Ankar Singh. He works with me at Holistic Healing Arts. And we'll be interview I'll be interviewing him. I'm Dr. Alfred Houck, by the way. And we'll be interviewing him about stress, which frankly I should be getting some help with right now because I'm a little stressed out doing this, but it's new to me. And I'm going to muddle my way through and I think we'll do just fine. So anyway, here's Dr. Singh. Welcome, Dr. Singh. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so we're going to be, um, so I want to ask a couple questions. So I wrote some of them down here. And so first of all, how long have you been in practice as a naturopathic doctor? Um, so this will be my 18th year. Um, wow. For, and uh, for those of you who may not know, uh, I've been very fortunate to be uh, spending all those 18 years with you. Um, <laughs> and so hopefully uh, many more to come. Yes, me too. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. It's been a great adventure. We've, we've worked hard together to create something really cool here. And it's wonderful. So how often in your practice in these 18 years seeing thousands of patients, how often would you say stress is a player in what you're dealing with? So uh, personally in my practice, and I'm fairly certain I can speak for all the other colleagues that work here, including yourself, I would say it's a daily thing. Like when we're in practice every day seeing patients, um, it's coming up frequently uh, day to day. So it is a concern that's um, very prevalent in our society. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure if we look at the statistics, um, where sometimes statistics, statistics can be misleading, but in this case, it is true that a majority of uh, patient visits will be due to some um, stress or ongoing stress. Right. And stress can obviously also contribute or aggravate all sorts of other physical issues that are absolutely, you know, not absolutely. just that. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of this today and it seems to be a modern thing. So what is it about modern day stress that is such a problem for us? So the first point I'll make is um, not all stress is bad. I mean, we talk about like short-term stressors. In fact, those short-term stressors um, enable us to actually protect ourselves. They enable us to perform. Uh, if you think about, you know, all the times you were preparing for exams in university or college or high school, and if you were like me who like procrastinated, I hope my kids don't hear that, um, <laughs> and you studied last minute, what actually got me through that and how I was able to, you know, bring that focus and awareness to my, to the things I had to remember was those stress hormones, right? right Which I'll get right. to in a moment. So short term stresses actually can be a good thing. They allow us to be more ambitious, maybe, you know, dig deep down, uncover those potentials that maybe we didn't know we had. Right. Chronic stress, when it becomes a day and day thing, and when you say modern day and age, it seems like a lot of us are functioning at a low or high level of emergency states mm. um, where we're kind of always uh, in sort of a hurried state. A lot of us, you know, you sort of observe people being in a panic all the time. So that is that chronic state of stress. And that really is what we are more concerned about is that day in, day out and the effects that that could have physiologically. So when someone is stressed, someone, if someone is confronted by something and you have to dig deep and, and get that adrenaline going, and then once you're through that, you're in a good place. That's right. Because right. you, you succeeded at that. So that's good stress in a way. That's right. But when that stress just goes on and on and on, that's going to hurt us and kill us to some degree. Yes. Right? Uh, I mean, it's hard on us. Yeah, it is hard on us. Yeah. And, and what is it about that that... First, two things. Why are we getting into states where that stress never ends? And why, And then what does it do to our body when that happens? So I'll answer the second part first. What does chronic stress do? So if we understand stress physiologically, um, two things are happening among many others. So your sympathetic nervous system is engaged along with your adrenal glands. And I'm sure everyone is aware of the term adrenal glands when it comes to stress. So anytime there's a demand imposed on us, whether it's good or bad, there's going to be release of adrenaline, cortisol, some physical things that are going to happen is your blood pressure will increase, your heart rate will get faster, your breathing will get faster, your body will mobilize glucose to the muscles. And in a sense, um, digestion, growth, immune system will sort of be put to a halt, so to speak, right? Because your body is more... Um, 
uh, concerned with getting you through that physiological response. Right, right. So now, if that's gets the back burner for now while we that's focus right. on. Okay. Now, if that's happening every day, day in, day out, that cascade will then potentially lead to um, a variety and numerous types of physiological effects because mm. we know chronic stress can affect any physiological symptom. So it is no surprise then that we start seeing um, depression in the immune system mm -hmm. or the immune system could go overdrive, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where you start getting into autoimmune and inflammatory states. Um, you and I both now know that the paradigm that seems to be very exciting and, and really at the forefront is underlying inflammatory processes can lead and contribute to cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and that's all from chronic stress. Um, chronic stress uh, and, and related to inflammation can affect uh, us from a cardiovascular perspective, can put you at a higher risk for um, stroke, heart attacks. And again, I go back to inflammation because if your body's having a tendency towards more inflammation, well, that can occur anywhere, especially your arterial walls. And then your body's gonna produce more cholesterol to try to right. create a band-aid to that, right? Um, muscle tension, you know, um, the good old upper traps feel chronically right. tense, right? Shoulders up into the ears, yeah. yeah. Digestive system, I mean, it can affect it in a way that you might be constipated, mm -hmm. diarrhea, IBS, mm -hmm. um, the list goes on and on. Okay. So are all these physical things are a consequence of this chronic stress, and chronic stress seems to be a fairly common thing today. What can we do? Like, why, I guess, why are we getting into com chronic stress? It seems to be more modern to me that's I've done, I'm always puzzled by that because years ago stress was there but it didn't seem to go on and on and so there was something different what is it that we're not doing that is that is not allowing us to break that cycle so that this stress just carries on forever so that's a very good question so what I would say to that is and one of the things I really try to um, encourage in my patients is it sounds so basic, but we have to become more aware and take a pause at what's actually going on in our, in our lives. So with patients, I'm actually the first step I do in terms of their chronic stress and their lifestyle is I have to make them aware that perhaps how they're living their lives or what the choices they're making or they're in this chronic state of like panic all the time, I have to make them aware like, you know, this is actually damaging to your body mind and your and your whole overall physiological makeup so how do i make someone accountable to that right so you have to work with them and inspire them to perhaps okay we need to start doing daily journals we need to look at ways of giving yourself me time right mm -hmm. so the relaxation exercise meditation yoga so it's almost bringing them back to for lack of a better phrase the simpler ways of of living mm -hmm. Um, sort of engaging and centering yourself. So the first thing is becoming aware. A lot of us are just walking in this perpetual cycle, oblivious to actually what's going on and how this might be affecting us, right? So I think awareness is definitely a key. Um, working with patients, we obviously will get into dietary um, recommendations, right? Um, and that's where you get into letting them know that okay, we're going to have to maybe look at minimizing, eliminating certain things, and we're going to have to look at focusing on certain things. A lot of us are now aware that processed foods, preservatives, um, fried foods, refined sugars, white flour products in abundance, or if it's something that's a regular part of your diet, is not going to be conducive to a healthy physiological state. So that's where you want to incorporate your fruits, your vegetables, proper hydration. Let's swap the caffeine and excessive alcohol for hydration, herbal teas and water. Let's get some nuts and seeds, healthy protein into your diet, your healthy fats. Like, let's not be afraid to get healthy fats into our system. Olive oil, coconut oil, butter. No problem with that once in a while, right? Yeah. So encouraging the shift in, in, in those um, types of paradigms as well. So our lifestyle and our diet together can be a bad, a bad pairing. It could be, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. And, and not being aware and just kind of going through the motions every day yeah. and not realizing the connection to how you might be feeling and just the way you're sort of dealing with life. So there are things that can be done because, you know, sometimes people use stress as sort of an explanation for why nothing can be done about it. Well, it's just stress, but obviously stress has some underlying causes and there are things that we can control that we can do to make a difference. 
Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and you talk about this a lot, I know, is that we have control over what? Well, we can take charge of our sort of, um, we can take ownership and we can be responsible for the choices we make. So it's almost like when you're trying to inspire someone to look at their life and how to better deal with stress, we're trying to maybe create a unique perspective on how to deal with certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, and as NDs, obviously, we would get into certain nutritional right. uh, supplements that are important as well. Um, and, and ones that come to mind are um, good old vitamin C. Mm-hmm. Uh, during chronic stress states, your body is physiologically becomes depleted in, in things like vitamin C. Vitamin C being water soluble, it's not uh, something that's stored in our system. Mm-hmm. But when we take it at um, therapeutic doses, it can aid in that physiological response to stress. Um, your B vitamins, um, it's a good idea sometimes to take a B complex, which helps um, you know strengthen the nervous system, helps us with uh, mood, how we feel, perhaps the depressive states, um, and making sure you take a synergy of those B vitamins because they all well work well together. Um, you know, you have your minerals like calcium and magnesium. Uh, which are very important and depleted as well in physiological uh, stress. So magnesium is a natural um, anti-stress, mm-hmm. anti-anxiety, helps you sleep better. Um, so obviously everyone's an individual case, uh, but as a general rule, those would be some considerations. And the only last thing I would mention in terms of that is the adaptogenic herbs. Mm-hmm. Um Adaptogenic herbs, that was a term actually, I believe, I remember one of my props teaching me in 1947, Lazarev, a Russian scientist, coined that term. And basically, it's an herb that has a unique, non-specific response to helping our body cope better and physiologically with stress. So some of the more popular ones out there are ashwagandha, rhodiola, um, holy basil, um, Panax ginseng, licorice, these are sort of that class of adaptogens that we might actually um, give to a patient to help them through a transition of stress or get them through a stressful period in their life. Very good. So as a naturopathic doctor, obviously you're going to sit down with your patient, spend time, listen, show that you care, help them understand where some of this is coming from and start helping them own what's going on with diet, some lifestyle, some foundational supplements, and then some unique natural remedies, some nutraceuticals like adaptogenic herbs. So this was when, when 1947? 1947, term? yes. So obviously there was already a need for adaptogens then. So it's obviously <laughs> not as new maybe as we think. It's always been there, yeah. but we're obviously becoming more aware of it. That's and, it's, right. and it seems to be a big player in the society we live in today. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well that's very good. Um, how are we doing for time? I think we're, we're running out or we're, we're running out. So I'm going to just ask you to close off with what, any last minute bits of advice or wisdom to our audience. Okay. Uh, I can give advice. I don't know about wisdom, but uh, the, the top three things I would say that I always talk to people is me time. Got to make me time, folks. Um, take those pauses during the day. Do some deep breathing. Um, you know, um, hug your loved ones. You need to do that me time for yourself. Fill your cup before, you know, you try taking care of the whole world. Number two, sleep is very critical. So um, try to create a good sleep hygiene. You know, um, don't watch any action thrillers like just before you're going to go to bed, especially the Liam Neeson and Sylvester Stallone <laughs> movies. You want to do some, uh, you know, relaxation. Maybe have a calming tea. Your room should be dark so that you we optimize the melatonin release. Um, and third was the diet that I touched upon. So if you're going to take three points away from today, me time, start sleeping better, and work on getting that diet uh, in check. And um, hey, you might want to see one of us as well so we can work <laughs> with you one-on-one. Yes, at Holistic Getting Arts, we're here for you. Thank you.